dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. And we're going to begin with some breaking news out of Laurel County. Officials say Interstate 75 is closed due to a crash at the 32 mile marker on the southbound side. These pictures are just in from the scene. They appear to show at least two tractor trailers were involved and debris is scattered all across the roadway. It is not known if anyone was injured or killed, but it is certainly a mess and we are told the road could be closed for the next few hours. We will update this story on WYMT.com and the WYMT News app when we learn more. Well, as you just saw, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, the Democratic nominee for vice president, took center stage at the Democratic National Convention with a fairly short speech. And on this third night, some Democratic heavyweights and Hollywood A-listers also showed up to pledge their support to both Walls and Vice President Kamala Harris. CBS's Skylar Henry is there. Good evening, everybody! Oprah Winfrey made a surprise appearance on night three of the Democratic National Convention, pledging her full support to Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walls. Let us choose freedom. Why? Because that's the best of America. We're all Americans, and together, Let's all choose Kamala Harris! Former President Bill Clinton also spoke. If you can get them elected and let them bring in this breath of fresh air, you will be proud of it for the rest of your life. Your children will be proud of it. Minnesota Governor Tim Walls is tonight's keynote speaker, and he will formally accept the nomination as Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate. Tonight is considered Governor Walls' debut Vice on a national Chair. stage. He was relative of unknown the about a month ago, but a new CBS News poll finds that some 60% of Democratic voters say they're enthusiastic about it. Walls is planning to highlight his upbringing in a small Nebraska town, his service in the Army National Guard, and his work as a high school teacher and football coach. Work that eventually led to Congress and the state capitol. Earlier, Stevie Wonder fired up the crowd. Can I look with the side that I chose to be on? And country music star Maren Morris performed. But the night was punctuated by some serious topics, including reproductive freedoms and an emotional appearance from Rachel Goldberg and John Poland. Their son Hirsch was captured by Hamas on October 7th, one of eight Americans. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Chicago. Of course, that story was filed before Waltz's speech was heard tonight because it was a very short speech. We weren't able to, to show you any of that, but tune in tomorrow to uh, Mountain News this morning and we'll have uh, more of a recap of Waltz's acceptance speech tonight at the Democratic National Convention. Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear expressed anticipation ahead of tonight's keynote speech by Tim Waltz at the DNC. When you look at Tim, you see a Democratic governor delivering results in every community from the cities to the suburbs to rural towns. Like Vice President Harris, he has worked around the clock to help middle class families get ahead. The governor also shared with reporters that he's seeing unprecedented momentum both on the ground and nationwide. Congressman Hal Rogers says Kamala Harris is too liberal for the country and he is all in for Donald Trump. The dean of the House also served in Congress at the same time as Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Waltz, and I asked him about that during a taping of Issues and Answers. He was in the House, uh, and I knew him. I don't recollect that we had any joint uh, book bills, but yes, I knew him, and he was a decent man. Congressman Rogers, who is 86, won the Republican primary in May for a historic 23rd term in the House of Representatives. No Democrat filed to run against him. You can see my Issues and Answers interview with him Monday night at 7 on WYMT. 
Former President Trump held his first outdoor rally since the assassination attempt against him last month. The Asheboro, North Carolina rally featured a bulletproof barrier reflecting new security measures by the Secret Service. North Carolina remains a critical battleground with recent polls showing Trump trailing Kamala Harris by two points. The former president is scheduled to make his next appearance at a rally in Glendale, Arizona, Friday. Meanwhile, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign announced he will be addressing the nation from Phoenix, Arizona on Friday. This comes as the independent presidential candidate is reportedly considering whether to drop out of the race and possibly endorse former President Trump. The campaign made the announcement of Kennedy's first public campaign event since early July without sharing the details of what he'll be speaking about. Well, as seen on TV yesterday, we talked about highs today in the mid-70s, and that's exactly where we were. We made it to 74 in Jackson, so that record cold high that we were talking about earlier, that record still stands. 73 was the high in Hazard, 75 in Manchester as well as London, 73 in Williamsburg. Uh, one of the warm spots, Somerset, 77 degrees. Same story in Harlan as well as Jonesville, and right now, we're seeing temperatures already in the 50s and 60s, low 50s, even upper 40s towards Clintwood. 50 in Clintwood, 61 Pikeville, 55 the Double Nickels in Wise as well as Jonesville, Harlan, 57 Middlesbrough at 58. All is quiet on live pinpoint Doppler radar, but the next 12 hours keeps temperatures in the low to mid 50s. We'll go to 71 by noon. When you wake up in the morning, we'll see temperatures in the 40s and 50s. But now the sneak peek of fall is almost over and the warmer temperatures are coming back. Find out when in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Eric, thank you. Kentucky State Police Troopers are looking for a man who escaped from the Rockcastle County Detention Center. Here's a picture of 41-year-old Justin Witt. He's described as being 6 feet 2 inches tall with brown eyes and brown hair. If you have any information, you should call KSP Post 11 at 606-878-6622. Two people are now in jail accused in the death of a 10-year-old. Police say she died in a moped crash on Interstate 75 in Southern Kentucky. Police say Darius Wade was drunk when he rode on the interstate with his girlfriend's daughter with him. The girl's mother, Denisha Martin, is facing a complicity to commit murder charge. In court papers, police say Martin claims she knew of Wade's drinking problem, but she tells us she felt it was safe for her daughter to go with him. When me and my kids got home that night, he was not drunk. He was not acting drunk. I spent time with him, so I know the difference between when he is drunk drunk and when he's sober. And when he left that house, he was not drunk. Wade was treated for injuries he received in the crash, then arrested. He is charged with DUI and murder. Last week, a Pike County fire chief pleaded guilty to theft of public funds. Now the county is discussing how the issue impacted the area. Christopher Chapman, the former Blackberry fire chief, admitted to using his company to funnel more than $76,000 in grant funding for his personal use. The county has locked funding for the department, and Judge Executive Ray Jones says he has yet to hear from those in charge now that Chapman has pleaded guilty, saying future grants or money will not be given until changes are made. Until we see that there's some changes have been made in, in the management of the department. Uh, you know, this department was flooded uh, uh, repeatedly. We've been working to build a new fire station, to get grant money, hazard mitigation money, to build a new fire station up out of the floodplain. Jones says he hopes the county will never have to see a situation like this again, saying the departments and their communities deserve better. Funding for the Buckhorn Water Plant project is now nearly complete. The $40 million project includes the water plant and transmission lines. Several leaders, including Congressman Hal Rogers, gathered in Hazard to announce a $10 million grant for the project. Buckhorn Mayor Simi Bowling says they appreciate the continued support. We're thankful for the congressman and all the people that are involved in this, and uh, we just hope that the spirit of uh, cooperation continues. Bowling says this was an exciting announcement for the Buckhorn community. 
FEMA SAYS IT WILL NOT RESTORE ALL DISASTER RELATED PROPERTY LOSSES, BUT WILL COVER BASIC NEEDS FOLLOWING THOSE STORMS THAT HAPPENED IN LATE MAY. THEY SAY THEY WILL COVER THINGS SUCH AS APPLIANCES, CLOTHING, AND HOME FURNISHINGS IN THE COUNTIES UNDER THE FEDERAL DISASTER DECLARATION. TO BE ELIGIBLE FOR THE ITEMS, THEY MUST HAVE BEEN OWNED BEFORE THE SEVERE WEATHER, WHICH HAPPENED BETWEEN MAY 21ST AND 27TH. THE ITEM ALSO HAD TO BE OWNED AND IN USE BY OCCUPANTS OF THE HOUSEHOLD. More than $3 million is being awarded to the Kentucky Housing Corporation. There were some community action agencies in our area that were sub-grantees. These include the Bell Whitley Community Action Agency and the LKLP Community Action Council. The grant will be used to weatherize low-income homes as part of the Kentucky Sustainable Energy Resources for Consumers Project 2024. Kentucky is one step closer to another cut on state income taxes. The current individual income tax rate is 4% in Kentucky. Today, the Kentucky State Budget Director confirmed working Kentuckians could receive an income tax reduction. Kentucky Senator Chris McDaniel of Ryland Heights says lawmakers can take action in January to reduce the state income tax down to 3.5%. That would go into effect in January of 2026. Some grim scenes in southern Italy as the bodies of several people who were aboard a mega yacht when it sank in a storm on Monday were brought ashore. CBS's Holly Williams has the latest on that. Divers found five bodies today in the wreckage of the super yacht, the Bayesian. One is still missing. An underwater drone is helping the search. The luxury yacht, over 180 feet long, went down early Monday morning about a half mile offshore near the village of Porticello. Italian officials say they believe the yacht may have been hit by a tornado over the water, known as a water spout, though that isn't confirmed. Fifteen people were rescued, but amongst those who apparently didn't make it to safety were a British tech magnate, Mike Lynch, along with his American lawyer, Chris Morvillo, and his wife. We still don't know why the yacht sank, according to Matthew Shank, a maritime expert. So all we know is that there was a significant weather event. Other yachts in the area at the time didn't go down. Is that surprising? Yes, it is. That says to me that this was an extremely localised event that's happened, which again would have been caused by a water spout. Holly Williams, CBS News. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, Ohio Valley Wrestling is making its way back to the mountains. And we'll see temperatures going up as we go throughout the day on Thursday. How warm will we go? Details on the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Stay with us. We go.